Hi, welcome to Given 15. I am Dutch and Cece's daughter, Sarah, and my dad asked me to read an introduction from him to today's post. He says, Cece and I traveled to Dallas this past weekend to speak for our dear friend, Chuck Pierce. While here, Cece came under a very severe vertigo attack, making it impossible for her to be mobile. I was not even able to leave her to speak at the conference. This also meant we were not able to return home on Sunday. We are still in Dallas until she is released to travel. Thankfully, I had yesterday's post already prepared. And thankfully, I had already asked Chuck Pierce and my brother Tim Sheets to record posts sharing recent revelations the Lord had given them, insights I felt were important for the next year. I had intended to release them later this week or early next week, but due to the circumstances, I'm releasing them today and tomorrow. You will greatly appreciate what they have to say. Prayers are appreciated for Cece's speedy recovery. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Give Him 15. I'm Tim Sheets, Dutch's brother. And uh, while I have written a few of these Give Him 15s, this is my first time to actually do the reading of it and welcome. About six months ago, I began to feel a different kind of anointing that was soaking my spirit. It was very bold. It was very aggressive. I'd been praying for apostolic boldness like the apostles prayed in, in Acts 4.29. Grant that great boldness would be upon me to preach your word and give signs and wonders and miracles in the name of Jesus. When I prayed that, I was taken into the spirit realm and I began to see and hear things more clearly than ever before. I entered a different realm. It was a higher level. I began praying into this anointing, asking Holy Spirit, what are you saying? And, and I heard him say this, I'm anointing my apostles, prophets, and kingdom ecclesias to win both old and new battles. New was emphasized. I begin to understand that while old battles must be dealt with, new battles and new ways to engage would be coming. I then heard the sounds of revival. It's hard to explain but revival has a different sound to it. When I was a, a boy, seven or eight years old, I, I was often in revivals as my dad was an evangelist. And I often heard revival sounds. They just have a different ring to them. There's a heavenly frequency in them, like vibration waves that resonate uh, like the sound of many waters or like the wind, as radio waves woven into the atmosphere of a building. You can't see them, but you can tune into them. These are frequencies of heaven that can be heard during times of revival. Angels are also very sensitive to these revival frequencies. One of the songs I heard during this vision was the song of the Welsh revival with Evan Roberts. This is a revival that I've studied much over the years, and it has inspired me. But I begin to hear the song of the Welsh miners who sang it underground to the degree that people would, would gather lawn chairs around the air ducts and listen to them singing, and the sounds of their voice would come from the ground. Here is love, vast as the ocean, loving kindness like a flood. When the Prince of Peace, our ransom, shed for us his precious blood, who his love cannot remember, who can cease to sing his praise, he will never be forgotten throughout heaven's eternal days. 
people were drawn to Jesus as this song was sung repeatedly. I also in this vision could hear the song of of George Beverly Shea, who sang hundreds of times in the Billy Graham Crusades, piercing, piercing into the souls of those who needed Jesus, those that were bound by sin. O oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art. I also could hear very clearly the song of the Brownsville Revival. He has fire in his eyes and a sword in his hands, and he's riding a white horse across this land, and he's calling out to you and me, will you ride with me? And everyone would answer, yes. Yes, Lord, we will ride with you. I then begin to hear the cries of revival, and I remembered as a young boy how we would gather uh, at the altar on Wednesdays and Sunday nights and the saints would pray for souls. In those days, they called the altar the mourner's bench. This is where you came to lay and kneel and mourn over the lost. You pleaded for them. You uh, you cried out to God. And I remember hearing saints calling out for their unsaved loved ones to come to Jesus. One that I'll never forget. A mother came to the altar and she was crying as hard as I've seen anybody cry. Just sobbing. Tears were dripping down off of her chin. This must have lasted 10 minutes. She knelt at the mourner's bench with her head laid down on it, and all she said was, God, don't let Jimmy go to hell. Jimmy can't go to hell. God, stop Jimmy. Jimmy's on his way to hell. God, do something. She said it so many times, and the memory of it has just remained with me through the years, as this mother was so burdened for her unsaved son. I then begin to think about the conviction that was so present during the altar calls back in those revivals. You could sense and you could feel the intensity of conviction that was drawing people to Jesus. Conviction is that knowing that you're guilty. And an atmosphere would come into the room. I know I'm guilty. I know I need Jesus. And sorrow would begin to grip those without Christ all around the room as they would sing revival songs like, oh, why not tonight? Why not? Why not come to Jesus? Come now. There is a story I remember vividly that my grandparents shared with me. Dutch and I used to go and stay with them during deer season when we were hunting. And on one occasion, I was staying with them. And for some reason, maybe because I was older and so were they. I began to ask them questions about their life. I wanted to know more about them. And sitting beside my grandfather in his recliner one evening, I said, Grandpa, tell me how you became a Christian. 
My grandmother spoke up at that time, and she said, Tell him the whole story, Billy. And he did. My grandmother had been asking him to go to revival service with her for many days. And finally, he agreed to go with her, and off they went, sitting towards the back of the church. He said conviction came upon him. He didn't come to Jesus that night, but he was convicted, and it gripped his heart. And she asked him the next day to go with her. And he tried to get out of it, but finally he relented and he did go again. And he heard the gospel. On the third night, Grandma said, go with me to revival. And he replied, no, I have to take care of the garden. But she begged him and finally he relented. They went and sat towards the back of the uh, auditorium on the side of the aisle. And as the altar call began, my grandpa said that conviction of sin overwhelmed him. And he scooted out of the pew into the aisle. And then he crawled all the way up the aisle, stopping just three feet short of the altar, laying on his face, and he gave his heart to Jesus. I, of course, asked him, why did you crawl all the way up there and stop, stop just short of the altar? And he said, I wasn't worthy to walk up to that altar in the presence of God after all I had done. So he said, I simply crawled. Grandpa gave his heart to the Lord that night and for the rest of his life served Jesus, even becoming an elder in that church. Conviction is a loving presence of God that reaches out. Yes, bringing remorse of sin, but bringing hope for a new life. I heard these sounds, and I knew that awesome revival was beginning to stir up in our nation again, and great conviction would come. It would come into our services, drawing men and women to Christ Jesus. I knew new songs of revival are coming and the great harvest that we have desired is going to be reaped. Revival and awakening are not going to be stopped. As I'm wearing today, hell does not stand a chance. Revival and awakening are going to roll through America and a billion soul harvest That has been prophesied is coming. Let me encourage you today to allow revival sounds to begin to fill your spirit. Let revival songs fill your heart and let the cries for the lost begin to fill you as well. Crying out for your sons, for your daughters, for your grandchildren, unsaved loved ones, let's see a great harvest. Pray with me if you would. Agree with me, Lord Jesus. We thank you for what you are doing on the earth. We thank you for the promise of revival, reformation, and the greatest awakening in all of church history. We are praying, Lord, for this to accelerate. We pray for a billion soul harvest to be reaped. We pray for prodigals to come home. We pray, God, that the awesome sounds of revival would be heard all over this planet. Let the power and ministry of Jesus Christ and his glorious gospel be seen 
and heard at a new level. And we decree this in Jesus' name. And now for our decrees. And these decrees are taken from my First Angel Army book. Decree them with me, please. The greatest days in church history are not in our past. They are in our present and in our future. Angel armies are ascending and descending. We are under an open heaven. Angels are ministering fresh fire from heaven's altar, and power from heaven is flowing to us and through us. Holy Spirit is breathing life into our King's revival campaign. Bless you, and thank you for joining me on Give Him 15.